The Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights at the United Nations in a report to the UN Human Rights Council noted that Sri Lanka's new government should embark on a national dialogue to advance human rights and reconciliation, calling for accountability and deeper institutional reforms to prevent a recurrence of past violations. It added that for sustainable improvements to take place, however, it is vital to recognize and address the underlying factors which have contributed to the economic crisis, including including embedded impunity for past and present human rights violations, economic crimes and endemic corruption. This is in fact the first time that a UN High Commissioner for Human Rights has referred to economic crimes in a report on Sri Lanka. In response to the report, Sri Lankan Foreign Minister President's Council Ali Sabri said that the High Commissioner's report makes extensive reference to economic crimes. It is observed that the High Commissioner's report makes extensive reference to economic crimes. Apart from the ambiguity of the term, it is a matter of concern that such reference exceeds the mandate of the OHCHR. In this context, we recall the paramount importance of adhering to UNGA Resolution 60-251, 48-141 and the IB package. Um, Sri Lanka and other delegations raised the question of economic crimes. The Human Rights Council in its thematic resolutions has focused on the linkages between corruption and human rights and the human rights treaty bodies have also paid increasing attention to these issues. The Sri Lanka situation is an important illustration of how human rights and corruption concerns intersect. While traditionally we have focused on accountability for human rights violations, the broad demands uh, from Sri Lankans today is for accountability for corruption corruption, the abuse of power and economic crimes that have impacted human rights. And we therefore welcome the commitments made by the government to tackle corruption. Sustainable recovery, development and peace can only be achieved if there is an end to impunity and the deep institutional reforms that can prevent the recurrence of violations from the past. Advancing the devolution of political authority is also integral to reconciliation as noted by India and also in past 